Welcome to Igniting Change, Finding Your Fire, a podcast covering all topics, health, healing, and spirituality. I'm your host, Meena Puri. Thank you for joining me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode um, of the podcast. It's I'm going to talk about trauma and its connection to love. So these are two topics that we can continue to have a conversation about and continue to explore further and further. As I work a lot with the trauma, I continue to learn new things from working with the clients. I continue to learn new pathways or new connections and how it shows up in human behavior. So when we think about love, it's you know on one spectrum and trauma is on the other spectrum. So trauma involves anything, any experience that we have not digested or metabolized. Many times when we think about trauma, we're thinking about a big um, traumatic, extremely traumatic event that uh, makes you almost you know dysfunctional. Uh, debilitated and it just dictates the rest of your life so that is trauma but what about the traumas the little traumas that we incur on a daily basis and some of the examples would be you're driving and somebody behind you is honking and feels that you're going too slow so they zoom past you and flip you off right and no matter how strong you are if you know sort of like this set unsettle you a little bit and you may flip them back off or say some choice words and but it does um, affect your confidence for many people it'll affect their confidence in driving because they're afraid someone else is going to do the same thing what are they doing wrong so there's a trauma response what am i doing wrong right it any instance any incident can quickly shatter your confidence and, you know, other example is someone you're in a meeting or in a gathering and someone makes like a slide, like a little, you know, underhanded comment. And, you know, people are not necessarily paying attention or thinking about the psychological implication of the words they're using to the other person. They many times mean no harm, but their words, they stick with you if there is trauma that has not been healed. So there's a trauma response thinking they meant to say this to me or the, or we take it personally. And, you know, it kind of colors the rest of our day. That's another trauma response. So imagine if we had so many, we, you know, since the childhood, we all incur so many little traumas experiences that we really don't know what to do with so we move past them but the experiences the energy of them stays in the subconscious and slowly slowly begin to alter our behavior because it begins to form our beliefs we don't even realize it and we think there's nothing is wrong in my life but everything is that kind of a feeling so so as I understand trauma more and more, and when I look around and you can do the same, so many of the responses, so many of the conflicts in relationships, so much of the suffering is a perpetual trauma response. What happens when we have not healed the trauma, we continue to repeat the energies of the prior traumatic experiences because if that's the energy within us, we are going to attract that same experience in a different scenario, in a different situation, over and over and over again. Or we continue to talk about it, so we continue to re-traumatize ourselves, um, and we get stuck in this trauma response. Another, you know, example would be you want to just, you know, someone is offering you love. Someone is saying, "I like to take you out. I want to do something for you." you can't accept it. You cannot accept it because the deep inside the feeling is who am I to be loved? No one has ever loved me before. Who am I to expect, you know, to, to take this kind behavior or the gift or this nice gesture? We're like, no, 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 it's okay. I, I don't really want it. And we become 
we are not very open because we have never received it before. But if we have healed the trauma, we realize that receiving, giving is part of the whole thing. You are worthy of receiving love, gifts, kind gestures. It's that what we want to restore with healing the trauma, our inner worthiness, our inner trust in the truth of who we are. We want to restore the disconnection that happens from trauma to the truth of who we are. So on one hand, we continue to seek love from the outside when we are, the, you know, continuing to seek love from the outside is a trauma response because there's a desperate need from the psyche to say, someone's got to love me. We are really actually trying to heal when we are seeking love from the outside, but we are misguided. We think it can only be healed when someone else from the outside loves us if you you know as time goes by we understand that to get love from the external is a very unreliable source people can withdraw their love from you people can change their mind or you no longer want it from them because it really was not what you were looking for so when we continue to seek love from the outside come empty-handed we it reaffirms our belief that was formed from traumatic experiences that we're just not worthy no one loves me no one is going to do anything for me i'm just you know abandoned i'm forgotten no one cares about me to move from that trauma response so now take a moment to think about how many people you know in your life in your close family even yourself um, some people in your neighborhood, in your social circles, how many times have you heard or seen or witnessed this behavior? So it is all trauma response. How do we move from that to love? That's the work of healing. And we do know, we have heard that Love, we never get love by asking for it. Love is not something someone can give us. Love actually is experienced when we give love. By giving love, we receive love. But how do we come to the point of giving love? Again, if we have not healed the past trauma, the thinking is, no one wants my love. They don't really care about me. Um, they really don't want me. So I can't really show my love to them because who am I to give love? I'm not worthy enough. So to move from, I am full of love because I'm not dependent upon it because it really cannot be achieved from an external source. I have reconnected myself to the truth of who I am by healing the traumatic experiences. So I experience a state of a being which is love, then the only thing for me to do is to be myself, which is you are just being love. You can't help but love others. You see someone suffering, you see someone needs, you're not waiting for them to ask you for it. You're not waiting for them to do the same for you. You just simply give. You can't help it. That's the state that we want to get to. That was a point of trauma, right? So remember, we live in a polarity world. We only learn by contrast. Trauma disconnects us from the truth of who we are to the point where we are constantly searching for that connection. But we become misguided in looking for that connection in everywhere, in everything but inside of us. The whole game is to find that connection within ourselves so we become who we truly are, right? And 
you know, we have trauma and then we have all the programming, which is another topic which we can continue to explore and how it affects human behavior. It is fascinating to me. The more I learn, the more I become really deeply observant of other people's behavior and I connect back to what it truly means. And so, you know, trauma in one sense can condition us to certain beliefs. Then we put a layer of the societal, the, the culture that we were born into, which is you're broken, you're not good enough, now go and fix yourself up. So we're always on the search, on the path of fixing ourselves. It's like chasing your tail. You can't fix perfection. And the perfection is not what you think is perfect. Perfection is that which is created in the image of the creator, God. Is God imperfect? No. Who are you? God. Everyone is God. We are created in his image. So we are perfect. But we come into this human world, which is telling us, you are anything but perfect. You're broken up. What's wrong with you? So we are searching for that. What is wrong with us? We can't find it because when you connect with your inner God-given perfection, you realize that the search was, the point was to connect back with who you are. It was to uncondition from the conditioning, from the belief that you are broken, is to come back to yourself. That's the healing work. So when we are doing the healing work, what is the connection between trauma and love? Trauma leaves us feeling, you know, uh, that we are not worthy enough, feeling abandoned, betrayed, um, resentful, like we're left out, neglected, disrespected, we're not good enough. You know, you, the guilt, shame, the mind-made constructs, you can fill in the gap. What is love? It's everything but that. So love is the, the real experience, the real feeling, if you can call it feeling. Actually, it is not a feeling because feelings fluctuate. Love is a constant, it's a state of being. All of the other experiences, the trauma experiences, the energy of that, the experience of that, when we transform that, transmute that into their highest expression of love, we continue to become, we continue to expand more and more in love. We connect with who we are. So that's the work, is freeing the anger in love, freeing the abandonment in love, freeing the lack of self-worth in love, freeing the betrayal in love, freeing the guilt and the shame in love. So these Lowest, lower expressions of the same energy, they are transmuted into love, into the state of being, state of who you are. So slowly, slowly, you begin to become more and more and more and more love. It fills your heart, it expands you. Love is who you are, you become that. When you are love, you, you have to do nothing. You just be. You can't help but be love with the people around you. So the point of the story is, the point of the episode is being mindful, tuning into what your day-to-day -day responses or behavior patterns or actions or your innermost feelings that you don't share with anybody. 
how much of that is in response to some past traumatic event or many, many small traumas that you have not healed. You know, the big traumas we are aware of, we can talk about them, but the little traumas, we don't even know. Until we see our behavior pattern and we ask the question, where is that coming from? And you didn't even realize all the little, little things that formed your behavior, formed your belief, you totally forgot about them. But it's no matter how small the experience is, I guarantee you one thing, it registers in the body. Body remembers, body does not forget. And anytime when you ask the question, what happened 10 years ago at that party where your friend was there or whatever the example may be, when you ask immediately, you recall as if it is happening today. It's just that we never we, we never asked the question. We didn't know to ask the question because we keep on searching for the external answers. We keep on thinking, well, this happened is because this person. This happened because this is what I was doing. We keep on trying to find a logical explanation for this current experience. But the current experience is being repeated by all the past experiences that we have not metabolized. It's the unfinished, the unresolved. It's the same energetics that is attracting the same experience to you again and again and again. Whether you look at workplaces, meetings, um, you know, all of this stuff shows up really in relationships. All of the relationships, whether you're standing in front of a grocery line or you're driving in a car or you meet somebody at the park or you're at a family gathering or with your, you know, your intimate relationships, your relationship with your children, all of the trauma that we have not healed is going to show up in relationships. Where else is it going to show up? By ourselves, nothing happens. We're not touched. We are not, the, our buttons are not uh, provoked. So ask yourself this question, how much of what you are experiencing are you contributing as your trauma response because you have not healed? Even the smallest occurrences, smaller event has significant effect, is a significant contributor to how we are experienced, how we are behaving, how we are being and what our experience is today. When it comes to soul's reckoning, nothing is a small deal. You cannot slip anything under the rug. I can guarantee you that. Even the tiniest thing where it was something against your soul, where it was something that caused you pain at any level, you can never ignore it because it'll come up. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. When it comes to evolution, nothing is small. Actually, the smallest things can reveal you the biggest, the biggest um, treasures, right? So here, here it is, you know, we are in this 3D world. We learn by contrast. This is a polarity world. So, you know, I don't know, you know, why is it that we are told something which is not true and then we chase our tail for the rest of our life trying to find it only to, only to learn that, oh, we were not told the truth. I don't know. Life is funny. It's like a game of hide and seek. Who knows? But that's what happens. So ask yourself this question, how much what you're experiencing is due to the small, seemingly small incidents in your past that you have not healed or um, transformed and what if you were to begin to really connect with this knowing that you're actually perfect so I don't mean to say it in a you know like a narcissistic way oh I'm perfect I mean to say it in the truthful way which is we are created in the image of God God is not God is just absolute the the phrase of perfect perfect or non-perfect it does not even 
um, go together with the word, with whatever we call God. So we are created in that image. We are whole. We are absolute. We don't even need to say we're perfect because inherent in the word God, there's no other need to explain. So you are that. We are all that. The healing work is to find it, is to connect with it. So I hope that was helpful. Um, give me a thumbs up, like, share if you think someone else may benefit from this. And um, so this is the deep work that we do, that we will continue to do inside the, um, what is that, uh, the Inner Compass Club, my membership program. And this is the deep work that I do with my clients with one-on-one. -on -one. And both of those links, if this interests you, will be below the video. You can get more information. And thank you so much for tuning in. I love your feedback. You know, I am not um, suggesting or ever claiming that I know all about this topic. I don't. That's why I continue to talk about the same thing in a different way as I continue to learn and connect the dots more as I continue to dive deeper and deeper into this work this is a bottomless pit so i'm just sharing and exploring it with you let me know what you think let me know what i said had any meaning for you so your comments your likes really encourage me to continue to do this work um, um you are always whoever is watching you're always in my prayers that may the best find you and I would love it if I'm in your prayers as well. So thank you so much. And I look forward to chatting with you at the next episode. Thank you for watching. You can find all episodes of Igniting Change, Finding Your Fire at AreYouVedicHealingCenter.com. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and share your comments.